Now let's have one last topic before we move on to the general, uh, I mean to the specific classes of organic compounds and uh, that would talk about acidity and this is actually an, uh, an application of our structural effects. So um, we used to have uh, three major definitions of acidity or basicity uh, in general chemistry but let's just use two of them here. Bronsted-Lowry and Lewis definition. Actually, I prefer just using Bronsted-Lowry definition for acids for organic chemistry because a Bronsted-Lowry acid, as they say, is a proton donor. That's why, for example, I have HCl here. That's why, in the first place, we always have an H and an acid because if H has one electron and one proton, you remove that electron, it will technically be just a proton, right? H positive is technically a proton. So if HCl dissociates in water, you would get a proton and chloride, for example. That's uh, This is based on bronsted lowry definition of acids. Now Lewis is, uh, for bases, it's an electron pair donor. That's why for example, in ammonia, ammonia is NH3, I'm losing ink, we have a lone pair here. The nitrogen here can uh, donate this electron pair to a certain atom, and that's why it acts as a base. Now, how do we talk about or how do we see the acidity of a certain compound, organic compound at that? Well. A general condition is that there should be an electronegative atom to give a proton. For example, let's have a carboxylic acid, let's have acetic acid again. We have here oxygen attached to a hydrogen and uh, the reason why it's acetic acid is because if this oxygen releases the H it would act as a proton donor right so wha what is the reason why oxygen gave out the hydrogen remember oxygen here is electronegative and you have to satisfy the electronegativity of the oxygen so there should be electron donating or electron repelling inductive effects. Remember, carbon compared to oxygen is less electronegative. It could repel electrons towards it, electrons, and then this oxygen would be satisfied. In acetic acid, we have two carbons. That's okay. But for example, we have here methanoic acid or formic acid. We only have one carbon. Compared to acetic acid, it only has it has a weaker electron repelling inductive effect simply because it only has one carbon. So what does it mean? The oxygen here is less satisfied. So how, how what does it do in order to be satisfied? It snatches away these two electrons. So if it snatches away these two electrons, that's what becomes the negative charge. And what happens to hydrogen? It loses the electron, it becomes a proton. So the rule is, if you satisfy the electronegative atom, it is less acidic. But if you do not satisfy, that is, you do not donate electrons to it, such as in case of formic acid, it is more acidic. So, if, if we use an even longer acid such as propanoic acid. We have here three, three carbons. Then it would satisfy the oxygen more the less it has to kick hydrogen or the less, necessi the, the less necessity of the oxygen atom to kick away this hydrogen atom. That's why the, the acidity goes down. So if we would rank these three, this one is the most acidic followed by this, followed by this. 
So this is the general rule for acidity of organic compounds.